Hey Norwegian Cruise fans and welcome to my channel Cruise with Grant where we talk about all things Norwegian Cruise Lines. The topic of today's video is solo travel and whether Norwegian is still the undisputed leader in providing the best solo traveler experience. I'll run down three things that you need to know to help you decide. So without further ado, let's get into it. Coming in at number three, I want to talk about Norwegian studio lounge concept. And this is a dedicated area that's available only to solo travelers. And I'll talk more about some of the limitations about that in a minute. But this area provides a self-serve coffee machine with lots of specialty coffees like cappuccinos and lattes. It also has a dedicated selection of fruit, cookies, and other beverages. Uh, and on some of the ships, like the Norwegian Epic, there's also a dedicated bartender during certain hours of the day where there's scheduled events going on. I've had a chance to see the studio lounges on a number of Norwegian ships, including the Epic, the Getaway, and most recently on the Norwegian Encore, and you can really see the evolution of the studio lounge concept. Now the Encore is currently the newest ship in the NCL fleet until the Prima is launched later this year, and you can see how they've actually incorporated these really cool panels around the edge of the room that change pictures. So even though it's in the interior of the ship and you can't actually see outside, they've really found creative ways to make this space inviting and dynamic. Now that I've spoken about some of the great things about the studio lounge concept, I also want to talk about some of the drawbacks. So depending on the ship that you're on, the studio lounge may be used very differently. When I was on the Norwegian Epic, the lounge was always hopping. It was full of people having conversation. And I think a big part of this was because the ship had arranged for a dedicated bartender to be available in the studio lounge space every afternoon. Whereas on my recent cruise in the Norwegian Encore, I didn't see anybody using the space. Uh, although I didn't stay in the solo traveler area, um, I did talk to other people that I met on board and they said with the exception of scheduled events, there really weren't anybody hanging out in the Encore studio lounge. Again, depending on the ship, um, how well the lounge is used in terms of helping you to meet other folks um, is going to be a little bit different. Coming in at number two are the studio cabins, also known as the solo cabins. And those are located in the same area as the studio lounge. And it's important to note that these are only found on some of Norwegian's larger ships, including NCL Epic, Getaway, Breakaway, Escape, Bliss, Encore, and also on the new Leonardo class ship. So the NCL Viva and the NCL Prima. Now there are some really big benefits to the studio cabins on NCL, and the biggest one is cost. If you've done any kind of cruise travel on your own, you'll know that one of the most prohibiting factors is the fact that you have to pay for a double occupancy. So even though you're one person, you still have to pay the same rate as two people. So the studio cabins aim to help keep the cost down and make solo travel a little bit more accessible if you're just one person. Well, maybe it goes without saying, because all of the studio cabins are located in the same area of the ship, if you run into neighbors in the hallway or in the studio lounge area, it's likely that they're traveling on their own and so you have the opportunity to break the ice and start some conversation so that you can find other people to spend time with while you're on your cruise. Now, like the studio lounge, I can't talk about the studio cabins without also talking about the drawbacks. And the main one here for me is size. So while the cost of the cabins is a lot less, so is the size. If you look on the NCL website, many of the cabins are about 100 square feet, um, and they include a much smaller bed, which is a bit of an issue sometimes for me. So you get a full-size bed in the studio cabins versus a queen or a king-size bed that you may get even in an inside cabin um, in other parts of the ship. So that may be a big deal breaker for you in terms of making your decision about whether this is the right space for you. Now, all of the studio cabins, for the most part, are also located in the interior of the ship. So you're not going to find any solo cabins on Norwegian, at least not on the existing ships. 
that provide you with a view of the outside. They have included some interesting ideas on NCL Epic. They have a porthole that you can open to look into the hallway. And on NCL Encore, they actually had TV windows um, that gave you a picture of a live view of the outside of the ship. While amenities and accommodations are a big part of the decision making when traveling solo, coming in at number one for me is the Solo Traveler Meetup program that NCL hosts. And this is one of the things that really stands out for me about Norwegian in their ability to help you make a community while you're on board and find familiar faces and people with common interests that you can spend your time with while you're on your cruise. Even if you like doing your own thing during the day, the Solo Traveler program offers you the opportunity to reconnect with people just before the evening. So if you're wanting to make plans for dinner or attending some of the entertainment or going dancing in the evening, you have a chance to see some familiar faces. And this meetup is hosted by the cruise director staff. So there's always somebody to help make sure that you feel welcome. Now, in terms of the experience of the solo group, that can be very different depending on your cruise. Some of the groups have been about 10 to 15 people, and so it's been really easy to have the opportunity to really get to know people and build some friendships that have lasted me now for over five years. Uh, but on some of the cruises where the itineraries are particularly inexpensive, um, the groups have been gigantic. So on one of my cruises on the NCL Star, there was almost 100 solo travelers, and I have to say, even though I'm a pretty social person, it was a little bit difficult to remember names and also make connections with that many people attending every day. I will say, I think that's a little bit of an exception and most groups in my experience are between 20 and 30. In terms of drawbacks, there's not really that many things that I can say about the solo traveler meetup. One thing to be aware of though is on some of the larger ships where there is a studio lounge, sometimes the solo traveler meetup will be hosted in the lounge, which you can't access unless you're staying in one of the studio cabins. So on some of the ships, that's been a bit of a challenge where you've either got to find a friend who will let you into the studio area so you can attend the meetup. Um, although on the Encore, it was great. Um, they were able to leave the door unlocked for the time that the solo traveler meetup was being hosted. I will say that the vibe of the solo traveler group in general has a lot to do with the cruise director staff who's hosting it. I've had really great hosts uh, across my many cruises that I've traveled solo uh, and they've been very different. Some of the hosts have been very laid back uh, and let us have sort of informal conversation to get to know each other, uh, whereas others have organized activities and scavenger hunts that we can opt into if we want um, to help us get to know each other and really come together and gel as a group. Um, I will say, if there's something that you're interested in, in terms of the solo traveler experience, if you want dinner reservations or help with making reservations for entertainment, please make sure you speak to the cruise director staff. They're always really accommodating and helpful to make sure that you're having the best experience possible. So having heard all this, would you travel solo on Norwegian? Let me know in the comments below if you're planning to travel solo or if you think that there are other cruise lines who are catching up with Norwegian around solo travel. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like and consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out. And don't forget to check out the other videos that I've made with top tips to help you on your upcoming NCL cruises. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.